So AR-1001, it is a uh, novel PD-5 inhibitor, it's called. So uh, similar drugs in that class people know about in the world are sildenafil or Viagra and uh, and Cialis, um, drugs of that class. And so the difference of this drug, though, that it does cross the blood-brain barrier and has an effect of increasing cerebral blood flow. And in that sense, we feel it's got a uh, superiority and ability to do things that uh, others in its class have not been able to be shown to at least been able to do. It's an oral uh, agent, so it's a small molecule. Uh, it doesn't need to be in injected or infused, and it doesn't require MRI monitoring. Uh, it would be able to be given then, therefore, to people who have pacemakers, people who have uh, uh, tendencies towards um, bleeding or on antiplatelet agents, which are contraindicated through for a lot of the studies of the monoclonals, if you will. Uh, so it's the first in this class to reach reach phase three, and that's why we are excited about it. Um, so there are certainly many agents in the oral class for Alzheimer's disease being studied, but we think this one is unique uh, uh, simply because of its uh, multiple mechanisms of action, and it's the potential of a PD-5 in, uh, inhibitor uh, helping in Alzheimer's disease. It's a drug that has a different uh, mechanism of action in contrast to others in the class. So um, to be technical, uh, it works through both the CREB pathway and the WENT signal process. Um, but basically in the end, again, it increases cerebral blood flow, um, protecting the mitochondrial membrane, decreasing oxidative stress, uh, reduces neuroinflammation, and in the end, then stimulates neurogenesis. So this is a, a pathway that's different than many other drugs out now for Alzheimer's disease. And in the end, though, it reduces the A-beta-42 and also the tau phosphorylation uh, that many other drugs have been seeking to do. Uh, in that sense, we think it's, again, got um, benefits uh, across the board. Plasma P tau 181 was studied both at baseline week 26 and week 52 during our phase two trial. And the average tau level in uh, picograms per milliliter started at somewhere between 4.2, 4.6 uh, in total. Uh, but we were able to see at week 52 um, more than uh, one picogram uh, per milliliter drop in that value, which is uh, very significant. Uh, this is bigger than um, even some of the uh, monoclonals that I had mentioned uh, that have already been uh, uh, given uh, accelerated approval through the FDA. So we're excited to show that not only is this drug able to uh, improve cognition in a post-hoc subgroup, uh, but also to be able to uh, show the reduction in PTAU-181 to make it consistent that, again, there is some correlation. So the phase three study um, has already started in the U.S., and we're looking for sites right now to be uh, participants in that. Um, but the phase three study is looking at a little bit earlier stage of Alzheimer's disease illness. So in the first study in our phase two trial, we studied mild and moderate Alzheimer's disease. And in this study, we're looking more at MCI or mild cognitive impairment and, and mild patients. Um, so a little bit earlier, mini mental status exam over 20 uh, with a CDR global of 0.5 and 1.0 for inclusion. Top line results we wouldn't expect until maybe 2026 because this is a uh, plan to be initially 800 uh, patients versus placebo. And we were thinking about doing two phase three trials to start with, but now we're talking about doing one global trial, uh, including Europe and Asia, uh, well as North America. And so now we might be going towards more 1,200 people in one study. So uh, it's just started in. So we just have. Uh, uh, just a handful of sites and just a few patients already enrolled, but we're looking for, again, 800 to 1,200 patients in total.